Because there's probably as many different ways to parent as there are moms out there parenting. So I think this episode is going to be great. All right, you guys, and welcome to another episode of Mom on Mom, where moms gather to talk about topics that affect moms, which means we can talk about anything. <laughs> Today's guest is Angie. Angie is a friend of ours who's worked with us for many years as an actress, and Angie, Introduce yourself to our viewers. Hi everyone, I'm Angie Farrow and I am an actress and a writer and filmmaker um, in many regards. Uh, I do all the things. <laughs> she does. She does all the things. That's the best way to describe it. <laughs> um, yes, and I, I love working with Blue Forge. Uh, we've worked on many projects together. And it's great. She's already here. I don't know why she's flattering her. She got... And you're a mom. And I'm a mom! <laughs> yes, I am. I have just one child, my dear Zach. He is 24 years old, turning 25 this summer, which is pretty crazy. That is. It's, uh, I mean, I know you guys, the old adage, you know, time passes quickly, but it is true. When you're a mom, it seems to pass even faster. Oh, yeah, yeah. it really does. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, about it. it started passing faster after my son was born, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, see? Children change the speed of time. <laughs> they, they have, have that power. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so today's topic, we're going to be talking about, you know, like Brianna and I touched on, we're going to be talking about empty nest. That's that feeling of, oh my gosh, my baby is gone, my baby's out of the house. But also we're going to talk about what it is to parent an adult child or older teen. And that is, that is, those are big topics. So we're going to start, as always, you guys, with an icebreaker. Okay. The icebreaker questions are questions that I have not revealed to my darling wife or my good friend at any point, nor have I revealed them to the rest of the internet, because those could leak to these two. <gasps> Today's question oh, no. is... Eyebrow maintenance. <laughs> do you do it? Do you not do it? Are you jealous that I don't have <laughs> yes, uh, 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 I am all about this question, okay, and these eyebrows drive me crazy because I have been dealing with a dry skin issue on my eyebrow and eyelid area over this last year. And uh, yeah, now it's not I, fair. It's not fair because I can't go get my eyebrows waxed now and I cannot bring myself to tweeze them. So. Yeah, this is, this is what we're left with. Because some of us find moving tweezers that close to our eyeball terrifying. It's, it's just inflicting that little bit of pain on myself to pull it out. Over and over and over. Over and over. And over because and that's over what I again. do. That's like, yep. no, no thank yep. you. I can have someone else do that for me. Mm -hmm. I just can't do it myself. And I prefer the wax. Because that does it all in one. Oh, oh, I have know. been primarily tweezing my eyebrows since I was about 11 because I hate my eyebrows because they're weird, they're very fair, but they go way down my eyelid and they don't have a good shape. Like, to have any shape, I have to create that. Well, you've done a fantastic job. <laughs> you know, you've done a fantastic job. I want that. thick, slightly bushy eyebrows that I could shape oh. beautifully. Those are like, the girls who have like those dark, a little bit bushy, like dark brown or black eyebrows. She's that talking have like, about faith. 
<laughs> no, more than fit. More than oh. fit, even. Oh. You're asking a lot. I'm just now like, we're going into like oh, caterpillars. I feel like mine are pretty pushy. They're dark. They're dark. There was someone I saw yesterday, maybe. I was running errands. There's somebody that had these eyebrows, and I was just like, holy shit, that's like a work of art. Mm-hmm. I, think they were, I think they were entirely makeup. Huh. But well, I mean, it, it, looked, looked, it could have been so good. good. It, it could, could have been, been actually, yeah. Because yeah. that's it, it looked looks, like. And yeah. it was like with the fade in the middle. And What's then like, a microblading? Oh my god. You don't want to know. It's like tattooing uh, to make it It's like a temporary hairs. tattoo. So they, it's like every year. So like, when you get a tattoo, I have many tattoos all over places. <laughs> so when you get a tattoo, you're they're using a needle to get ink into like the second layer of skin. Yes. Which is where like our top layer of skin is what like renews itself and like is constantly, okay. you know, shedding so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. all of those cells renew, but the secondary layer never actually comes out. Mm-hmm. So it stays in and that's why if they can get the ink in that layer, you can have tattoos. Okay. Because they basically color that layer. Okay. So with microblading, they're using the same idea. They're using a blade instead of a needle, but it's very, very fine, like super duper fine. Um, but it is like a tiny blade. She's right. I didn't She's know. so <laughs> knowledgeable about yeah. like this. And yeah. it's not going as deep as a tattoo, so it's not permanent, but it's like semi permanent. Okay. So they use that blade and special ink that's supposed to be like good for your skin, and they try to use a color that works, you know, to what you're what you're looking for. If you want dark eyebrows, if you want to match your hair, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and they they draw with tiny tiny cuts all of the little hairs. <laughs> so they cut you over and over and over again. And, it's tiny, uh-huh. and, and, and with people that, pay big money for oh, people huge pay money. someone to do that. Huge money. To have them cut your eyebrows into oh, place. Oh my God. Um, but they do they do use um, they use a numbing gel so that you don't feel it. So like I watched um, I watched Gabby Hanna get hers done, mm-hmm. and she was terrified. Mm-hmm. Like she was absolutely terrified. Um, wow. <laughs> but like it didn't hurt. Someday I'm gonna be abducted. And like, <laughs> so abducted. the woman's doing like, it, and she's all like, the things that women are you do. doing it? <laughs> Yeah, like it was like no big deal. Yeah. But like I would, I would never do that because I, if someone is is doing something like that to me, it needs to be permanent. Yeah, like, but I get a tattoo. Like it may suck. It may take a couple hours. Well, do the suck. tattoo. But like yeah. once it's done, this is here forever. I'm right. gonna be a ninety year old lady with this tattoo. Hot. Like yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I've seen old people with tattoos. They look badass. Yeah. Like I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, I would do that. My feeling about eyebrows, honestly, is like, do what makes you happy. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, I do mine just because I don't like my natural shape. I know that there's a lot of people like, I love the shape of your eyebrows. I think you have a great Which shape. Which is the right thing for her to say. Well, I'm just saying, like, you just, if my eyebrows came in like yours. I would not. And, and that's just how your eyebrows come in. Yeah. Yeah. This is just her eyebrows. Are you kidding me? <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. However. <laughs> like mine but they're on your face I don't care you do what makes you happy I've never seen somebody's eyebrows and been like oh she should do something about that <laughs> I just think that's rude and judgy and that's how I feel about basically like right, all right, right. right. Oh, like, absolutely. like you do what makes like you, you happy do you, boo. if yeah. you don't want to shave your legs if you don't want to shave your pits if you don't want to do anything with your eyebrows if you just want to be like all natural you do that yeah you yeah. know it's your body yeah I think in terms of if we're veering off of eyebrows into body hair and general, <laughs> I mean, I, I would have to agree with that. I mean, it's funny. I've never really thought about that. But yeah, like eyebrows, armpits. I just think like eyebrows the same as like other body hair. It's stuff that like... Other faces. <laughs> right? I mean, I know that are not groomed. Pe- right. People are really sensitive about that particular yeah. subject. Like, I know I personally, and also just sensitive, but I was going to say. Uh, it's a sensitive area. It's a sensitive area. Yeah. And a sensitive subject. I, I think that, yeah, definitely you need to do what makes you feel comfortable in your own skin. Well, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I think that's pretty darn vital. Yeah. But again, it's amazing how, like, the three of us are like, oh, hell yes, yeah, you need to do what you're comfortable with. And are yet so many folks are, are judgy. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, you yeah. Say, if you're a woman, you actually must. X, Y, and Z, and you know, again, we don't need to get into it because that is kind of a serious topic. 
But holy moly, I never thought that that extended, but of course it does, to eyebrows. Oh yeah, no, I've heard eyebrows talk about, about people's eyebrows, and I'm like, look, there are little bits of hair that are helped, they're a second layer, it's them and our eyelashes. Right. The purpose is to keep stuff out of our eyeballs. Sure. Mm -hmm. I guess it's kind of generally necessary to see. I guess. And if you can't see, then you've got a whole other board of issues that you're dealing yeah. with. Yeah. You know, Those still yeah. living an awesome, badass life, but, you know, yeah, it's important to not get crap in your eyes. Yes, right? absolutely. Yeah. yeah. As far as people being judgy, I think as far as body hair goes, right now eyebrows are the one thing that will get the most judgment. Oh yeah, I see. I've seen judgy people online with the eyebrows big time, more than anything. I, whereas people have seemed to get more open about, oh yeah, if you don't want to shave your armpits and you want to shave your legs, yeah. like but your eyebrows better be eyebrows. on fleek. But like, those eyebrows, are not you're going to get judged if you got some bushy caterpillars. I've heard people say yeah, things like that. So it's like, or if they're too thin. Oh, because some of us who grew up when it was very popular to oh, have them gosh. very, very thin. Yeah, no, people are like, oh, they're so thin. Oh, that's oh. so 2002. I like, like to be thin. Yeah, and? I'm really thin. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I go in to get my eyebrows waxed, and this has always been a thing, yeah. I'll be like, make them thin, and they'll do my brows, and I'll be like, this is this is not thin. We're not thinner. 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 And they'll be like, are you sure? And they'll be like trying to be like, I think that it's better if they're, you know, with your family. I'm like, no, please, thin. I've been doing it for like all my yeah, life. Right. Thin. <laughs> it's yeah. the way I like it. It's the way I feel like me. This is now what I'm stuck with right now. And I like that. I like that. This is how I feel like me. I mean, you guys, like we yeah. cannot deny the fact our eyebrows are on our face. So well, they frame our They do. Yes. They really do. They really so, do. I mean, I want to have, uh, be able to have a say in how it's framed. Absolutely. Sure. Which mm -hmm. makes perfect sense. All right. And now, since we've now covered that, <laughs> and all of you know exactly what to do with your eyebrows, <laughs> whatever you can want to do with your eyebrows. That's, that's right. You it's whatever you want to do. That's right. It's your face. Mm -hmm. It's your, mm -hmm, it's your <laughs> armpits. It's your, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely! <laughs> and the dogs are going crazy, so I guess mm -hmm. what they're telling us is it's time to dive into our main topic. Alright, All right. let's do that. Alright, you guys. Empty nest. Oh, now I did a little bit of math. Noodle, you'll never be a mom, honey. No. Oh, that's You're true. not a mom. Oh, mom. She says, but no. I like to be on a mom. Yes! Oh, 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 so I did a little bit of math, you guys, and I think, yeah. stereotypically at least, there's only one mom here today who stereotypically should be starting to experience emptiness. And tell all my feelings about that. Exactly. That's yes. <laughs> so I want you guys to start because I think stereotypically, as a, a 45, 46 year old woman with older teens, I'm supposed to start feeling this right about now, oh. but it hasn't hit me yet. So mm -hmm. I want you guys to talk about this first, because I know this is something that you guys are experiencing. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So, of course, uh, Zach, my son, he is 24, almost 25, so mm -hmm. it has been several years since he moved out. And, uh, you know, leading up to him getting to that point where he was maybe moving out, I was already like feeling it because you know when they when they get to that point in their teen years, they don't really spend as much time at home. Mm -hmm. You know, they're off doing their own thing, so you already start kind of getting a little bit prepared for that in that way, and and feeling those feelings though at the same time. And um, so when Zach, <laughs> in my experience, I had also been going through some health issues mm. around that time frame. Um, and I had had an allergic reaction to ibuprofen and I had kidney failure. Um, oh. So it was, it was an acute reaction um, due to the allergy and it inflamed my kidneys and I was almost dead. <laughs> uh, and um, so prior to, prior to that, you know, I always wanted to pursue the arts, mm -hmm. you know, in general, ever since I was little. It's what I've always wanted to do. And, um, but I never really, you know, pursued that a lot when, when Zach was growing up. Um, I just, you know, was working and, and taking care of things at home and mm -hmm. whatnot. Um, so what happened is when he did move out and I was going through this health stuff and my health 
kind of got better. Um, I also, sorry, I had a bouncing all around. I had a knee injury that happened. So I had a knee injury. The initial injury was actually when I was in my early 20s. And um, when I had the kidney failure, I was laid up in bed for like three months. And so my muscles kind of like atrophied a lot. Um, yeah. And, and I'm, you know, with, uh, with the excess weight and everything, when I started walking again and not having the muscles used to carrying the weight anymore, I think um, it, <laughs> that knee, the meniscus tore. I ended up tearing my meniscus, which um, I had already torn the ACL uh, in the initial injury and then never went to the doctor. Um, but that meniscus, when it tore, it folded in half, like it mm. folded and bent in between itself, kind of. And so it was massive pain. Yeah. So then I spent several months, like I had to use crutches. Um, or else like be in a wheelchair and stuff like that. That's why I really couldn't get around very easily. Yeah, it was really difficult. And so I was going through all this at the same time as Zach is getting to that point where he's going to be moving out, which was like really difficult too, because I felt like, you know, now I can't really do a lot and, and he's getting ready to leave. And it right. was just like, it was very emotional. You know, I think that might have like made it even harder for me to deal with it, I guess, mm -hmm. in that aspect. Um, and so, anyways, uh, after after he moved out and after I got my myself back into, you know, being able to walk regularly from physical therapy and everything, because that took a lot of physical therapy. Oh, I bet, yeah. And so once I wasn't needing to use, you know, the wheelchair and the crutches, yeah, and all of that, and get my body and my mind back into, you know, being able to follow a regular routine because that I, that totally it's a crazy what it did to it turned your life upside it down. Did. It did turn my whole life yeah. upside down. Yeah. To where like you know I'm used to being very independent yeah. and then Larry had to step in and like help me a lot with a lot of things and I'm such an independent person that that was difficult for me to do. So you're like if you're feeling powerless. Right. And at the same time, you're feeling this incredible loss. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, so actually, in some ways, and of course, a loss of being powerless is a loss of power. So it's like you're yeah. feeling this loss of your independence, this loss of power, this loss of health. All these things we take for oh my gosh, all these things we take for granted, right? And, and, and the now the loss of my yes. poor child, as far as no being at home. Oh, of course, yeah. And and the fact that during those last you know couple of years of him being there, like I was just so not able to do a lot of things so that was really hard um so after he moved out though um what we would do like a, a fun way for us to get together we did some like acting workshops together okay because he was always interested in that too mm -hmm. and so that's when we kind of started like pursuing that stuff so i like that i like that a lot actually as yeah. a you know find that thing as adults, yes, because mm -hmm. we are then forced to not reevaluate. That's absolutely the wrong word. To reimagine our relationship with our children mm -hmm. when they are no longer living in our home. Yes, yeah. And I love that connection. Like find that thing other than blood, mm -hmm. other right. than where you live, right. you know, other than yeah. where you live in. That is your connection, and pursue that together. Mm -hmm. That I really like. That really speaks. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm putting. I'm putting your guys' advice. I'm putting it in my back pocket. Uh -huh. You know, <laughs> that was yeah. That was really. And it was always you know really a special thing to go do those you know workshops together and yeah. stuff. We, yeah. uh, me and Larry and Zach, all of us, we joined the Rocky Horror Picture Show uh, <laughs> uh, troupe where we would do the uh, the shadow shadow yes. cast. Yeah. We the shadow cast. And so that was a lot of fun to do together. At the same place where we were doing the workshops, we would do the, the shows there. Because I see, I see a lot of, um, and primarily when I say this, I mean like on the, well, we should we call them reality shows? You know, but like on <laughs> yeah. reality shows, just like the tropes, the tropes that are used in television and film, what I see a lot of is, you know, the, the kids move out. Mm -hmm. And they come back to do their laundry. They come back, you know, do whatever it is. Yeah. And I'm always like, well, what a weird dynamic. You're coming back to your parents' right. house, still acting like a child, but obviously you're not. You're living on your own. Right. I love this idea of instead of us gathering once a week or once a month or you just dropping in whenever, kiddo, yeah. 
we have this other thing that we go and do together mm -hmm. and I feel as like adults. That's cool. I feel like because like when that. we're that age, when we're that like 18, 19, 20, you know, whatever age we end yeah. up moving out, I feel like life is so crazy. It's really the responsibility for the parent to continue to maintain that relationship mm -hmm. because I think life is just too much when you're that age. I mean, you're really becoming an adult and you're yeah. really like discovering the world through your own lens instead of like in a family dynamic. Yeah. Like I remember going grocery shopping for the first time, like and just being by myself with a cart and like it was weird. <laughs> it was really, really weird. I had always gone with my mom or gone with um, a friend's mom or my friends yeah. or, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but I really feel like it is, it's on the parent, like you, you need to establish some sort of connection, like mm -hmm. we have dinner together every Wednesday, yeah. or now we're going to join the bowling league together, or what it, you know, or do acting together, right. you know, find something to connect. I like that. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of like, yeah. um, so my experience has been... That idea, I'm sorry, uh, uh, let me just say, I, I oh love yeah, the sorry. gem that you just touched on, the, um, when a child first moves out, you feel very strongly, and actually, I think, I, I think I, I've never thought of this before, but I think I agree yeah. with you, that it is the parent's responsibility to keep it, because it's true. The, yeah. Also, another stereotype is, you know, the the young adult child moves out, right. the young adult moves out on their right. own, and the parent is like, oh, they never call, and I'm always like, I don't want to be that way. Well, right. yeah, yeah. So I'm not. If, I, if I'm missing my kid, yeah. I'm going to pick up the phone, I'm going right. to call, and I mean, it's up to them whether they pick up. That's fine. But at sure. least then I could say, oh, Max doesn't pick up. I'm going to message him. Or, you know, what media does he use? Right. You know, where, where right. can I yeah. go? Right. If I post an Instagram, is that where he wants to connect with me? Right. As an adult, how does my son want to connect with sure. me? Sure. And that's his yeah. term. That, and that's what yeah. I try to do, you know, with mm -hmm. Zach and everything. And um, it's, it's a little difficult, too, because we have a lot of... Uh, it's like in my family, I think, uh, with like anxiety and mm -hmm. like yeah. depression and, and disorders like that or yeah. whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, and so it, it makes it so sometimes like communication is hard. And so yeah. um, it's it can be hard to keep yeah, that's like an extra with yeah. Zach. Yeah. Um, and even Zach is even with his friends and he'll talk about this too, you know. It's it's just uh, he doesn't always feel like he can I don't know keep in touch. It's hard for him. Yeah, uh, he deals with his <clears throat> health issues mm -hmm. um, as well, like physical health mm -hmm. issues, and mm -hmm. so then that kind of makes it harder with the any mental health issues, right? As yeah. well to go along yeah. with it. Um, and so I, you know, I I know everything that he goes through and everything, and so I don't want to make it you know I don't want to make him stressed. Right. about about um, keeping in touch with me. So it's hard to find that balance though because sometimes I'm wondering am I not am I not in touch enough? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like in that case and I think this is with all parents and I, I definitely have seen it as like a stereotype and a trope in films too mm -hmm. is you know as a parent we reach out and mm -hmm. if they don't get back to us to us. Right. Where right. my mom reaches out to me sometimes and I don't get back. Right, I know. And I should. You know, it puts that trope of like my grandma would always say, You need to come by more, you need to see me more. Right. And it's like, and that's that's gonna be a continual thing. And I'm guilty you know, of that, right. you know, my whole life with my family. I got family scattered all over the place. Yeah. And but anyways, no, my dad he lives all the way across the country and I don't get to see him much. And yeah. I'm a horrible about, you know, calling or anything. I found that Facebook has been a really great thing since my dad is actively on Facebook now. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I found that too. That we uh, keep in contact on Facebook a lot more. Yeah, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, my mom got a cell phone. Like at, she had one way back when I was a teenager that she and my dad would kind of share. Um, but she finally got her own cell phone that like she actually like actively uses all the time. Um, and in the past year, she and I have talked more than in the rest of the time since I moved out of the house. Mm. Like it's it's crazy and it's communication is hard and I definitely yes. feel you on that because my family we have a ton of mental health issues that that run all through it's all of my mom's side it's right. like primarily the women in my family mm -hmm. um so it's like my mom's got her mental health issues I've got my mental health yeah. issues <laughs> and getting those two ships 
to meet can be very that, difficult. That would be hard. And, and I just, it takes a lot. I, I want to say this. I know I'm not either of your guys' mom, obviously. Okay, that would be weird. We're married. <laughs> and um, that would be weird because I would have to have been four when or something, when I gave birth that to you or something like that. Yeah, not good. <laughs> I would just like to say this. This is something I've I've written about to myself, like notes to myself many, many, many times, and also just that I have felt so profoundly, is I think, and I think we all agree, mom shaming is not okay, right? Right. Oh, oh awesome about that. Yeah. It's a big part of the show. Like shaming people in general. But shaming in general. I have to tell yeah. you that one of the most hurtful things that I have ever had said to me is when someone says, boy, I haven't heard from you, you know, you could call a little more, something like that. Yeah. I have promised myself that, and I think so far I'm doing, I know they're still in the house, but actually there's still communication that can be cut off even when someone's in the house with you. Oh yeah. yeah. And, so, and sometimes Master sure. and Faith need that time away from you. They're like, no, I'm not gonna talk with you about this. Yeah. I have made a concentrated effort I am not doing that to my kids. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, I like myself, that's number one, a lot. I like my own company. Now people say, oh, you're an introvert. I'm like, no, actually I'm not. I'm really super not. But also, I want them to like themselves. And I know they love me, <laughs> that's, because yeah. when we yeah. are together, we show it. It's mm -hmm. not about, you know, you could call me more, you know, you could cry. Right. That's important. When my yeah. father's father got ill at that time, at the end of his life, Maxwell and I, Maxwell was very tiny, but Maxwell and I were going every week. And at one point, he just got to a place where he was like, I don't want to see Jenny and Max. I don't want them, I don't want, I think it was primarily Max, but I don't want them to see me in bedridden, okay? From the time he was bedridden and told my grandmother that he would rather us not come in, I did not. And now, I mean all the way after he passed. The last time I saw him, yes, I know. It's a very it's a very emotional conversation. We're having a lot of emotions but here. The only are. reason I bring that up is not because I find it sad. Because yeah. there were a lot of our family members that were like, well, I'm not going to do what he says. I'm going in. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not. And yeah. I hope that you guys respect my wishes when I'm done. Because sometimes I'm done. Yeah. And sometimes I don't need, you know, I come from a large Italian family. Yeah. Seems like everybody's got an opinion on every what everybody else is doing. And sometimes I'm like, I'm sorry, you guys. I grew up with you, but I've now lived for many more years than I ever lived under your roof. And you don't know me. You don't know the adult that I am, and your constant projection of who you think I am when you're speaking to me is detrimental to my well-being and my mental health. Mm -hmm. I think as parents, the best thing that we can do for our kids is to say, it's okay when you don't call. I know you're happy and you have a yeah. life. Yeah. If you're sad, that's, I hope right. you reach out to me, then sure. you know that I'm here. Right. But... <clears throat> Everything is just copacetic and you're carrying on, go for it, kiddo. There's no uh, mandatory requirement. You know, you could come, I hate that shaming. Yeah. You could come see your grandma more. You could come see your dad more. You could, no, 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 no. No. Yeah. We don't owe them, and I'm saying this as a parent, our children do not owe us homage. Our children do not owe us to go, I created these creatures. I feel like that kind of shaming too it always puts it on the younger party mm. and that's the thing that's i think why i have such a strong feeling about it is because it's like i would have family members say to me you know like oh you need to call more we never see you blah 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 mm -hmm. and i'm just like i feel like life as a, a young adult not young adult like we talk about books where it's like teens but i mean an actual young adult someone who's like first entering the workforce mm -hmm. and or university mm -hmm. Or just life yeah mm -hmm. everything is so overwhelming that I feel like mm -hmm. it's your parents job to connect with you it's your grandparents job to connect with you yes and I feel that on myself if I lost touch with Max or Faith when they were moving out I feel like that's on me mm -hmm. that's not on them mm -hmm. um, because they're they're my kid right you know 
Yeah, that's just the way that I feel. And that's what I definitely, because obviously Max and Faith haven't moved out yet. But that's the mom I want to um, be. I want to be the right, mom exactly. who texts once a week and just says, thinking of you, babe, let me know if you need anything. Yeah. Yeah. I just send Facebook Messenger messages. That's my way of reaching Zach. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. I'll send it to Zach yeah, and perfect. Cassie because sometimes Zach doesn't check his. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? No. That's, it's not invasive. Mm-hmm. It's not shaming. No. It's not guilt ridden. It's a miss you, baby. Yeah, we may miss them. But you know what? I don't know if I've ever had someone say, I miss you. And it, well, no, that's not entirely true. Like when you say, when we're working out an opposite shift and you say, I miss you, uh, I can't wait till we have dinner together tonight or something like that, mm-hmm. that, that does feel nice. But I, I always feel like from a parent or a family member, like, miss you, it's really saying, why haven't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's you what owe I it to like. me to come see me. They, yeah. That's it. And Maybe. it's like, I don't feel like our children owe us anything right right yeah i mean that's just me i know that there's a lot of moms that oh, very yeah. adamantly feel like i brought you Absolutely. into this world you will worship me until i take you out of this world you know type of thing but i just i feel like we chose to, we chose to have them, they did not right. choose to have us. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Angie. Absolutely. Yes. My, my hope is that, you know, as as he gets older, that he'll want to spend more time with me yes. or be more yeah. in contact. Yeah. Um, and I think you he know, will. I think there's there's stuff, you know, because I'm, I'm like five years older than him. Mm-hmm. And there's stuff like me at 25 did not keep in touch very well at all. Uh-huh. Me at 29 didn't keep in touch very well. <laughs> um, and it's like, I think there's just, there's different things in your life that, that you realize you don't have as much time as you think you have. And mm-hmm. you don't know, you know, it's like, I feel like you want to take advantage of the time that you, mm-hmm. you have. And right. that definitely was kind of huge for me um, because my grandma passed recently. And that really made me think like, I want to spend this time with them. You know, I want to be with them. Yeah. And that's the same way that I see with the kids. It's like, it's hard. And it's like, for me, emptiness is kind of a continual process Mm -hmm. because it's like what the first time that I realized that one of them had stopped holding my hand when we were like crossing a parking lot or a street. (laughs) And then I was like, Oh, they don't hold my hand anymore. (laughs) When did this happen? Right. And that was so hard. And that still feels hard. Yeah, um, and it's like it's all those little things. Like Faith used to love to go to the playground, and like that's the thing she would like constantly ask me, "Can we go to a play?" We just go to like the local public school, or like we found all of the playgrounds all around here, all the good ones. One that was like thirty minutes away, <laughs> and found like all the good ones, and that was her favorite thing to go and do. And she turned like thirteen and just wasn't interested. It's not like it happened overnight. It just like we would go less and less, yeah. and we just didn't go yeah. at all. Yeah. And now she's like. Good. Go play on the slide. Playground, whatever. Yeah. I'm seventeen. <laughs> I want to go play on the slide. Uh, <laughs> like, like, um, one of our family. I know, me too. <laughs> I never stopped liking playground. Um, one of our family traditions that we have is we go to the Puyallup Fair, and we go every year. And actually, the last two years, we've started going to the Spring Fair and the Fall Fair. Oh, nice! Because we're getting a little extra. But anyway, oh, I want the uh, extra. <laughs> but. Um, I started noticing like the changes of like when we would go, how our activities would change. You know, we were doing rides less. One of the days it wasn't even dark yet, and they were like, "Yeah, we're ready to go home." And we used to go like literally open to close. We would only go one day, but we would do like open to close and do everything. And it slowly started changing. And we had a couple years where we were just like, "I don't know if Max is gonna want to go next year." Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's actually because he stopped liking the rides as much, and he was kind of getting bored. And I was just like oh, this is going to end. And so for me, it's finding those things to continue to have something to do once they're grown. Yeah. And continuing to find things. So, and finding different ways to experience things. Like, like with your hair. Yeah. You know, and it's like, so like, 
for us, it's like going to the movies. We all really like to do, and we can't do it all the time because it's expensive. Man, it has got especially expensive. because of concessions. Can we talk about concessions? Oh, it's not oh, about uh, yeah, seriously, my wallet doesn't like that conversation. Right. <laughs> uh, last Hi. summer, Turn it inside out, empty. <laughs> continue to do with them yeah. as they're growing up because Max is turning 20 this year Faith is turning 17 and like when I entered their lives Faith was five and about to turn six mm -hmm. and which means that Max would have been eight yeah yeah he, Max was eight Wow. Oh and goodness. so it's like he's about to be 20 and it's like oh, I remember oh being 20 I'm like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, it's big that age, like Zach right now, yeah. he'll be turning 25 this summer, and I'm like, yeah, I remember so much when I turned 25. I was so when I was so upset that I was turning 25. I'm turning a quarter of a century <laughs> old. I'm so old. And <laughs> it's existential crisis. 25. A quarter of a century. Oh. I think yeah. every year since Faith turned 13 or 14, she's like, I'm getting old. I'm gonna be old so soon. And she'll, we'll say something, you know, like the mortgage will be paid off, or this will be happening, and Faith will be like. I'll be 20. I'll be so old. <laughs> and I'm like, you're like saying space. Right. 20, yeah. 20 is I'm so like dead, young. You know, it's, just like, it's so, so, 24, 25 is so, so young. So young. I, I look back and so I'm like, young. what? So young. I can do anything. My body was never I angry. Know. Oh my gosh. I can yes. do anything. And now I, I you turn the wrong way and then my back is out for a week. I'm just like, yeah, that. I had a pinched nerve the other day. That was fun. It was oh, making me feel great. all sorts of weird. I'm at work. Yeah. Yeah. Feel like I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> feel yeah. nauseous. And then I, I like get a little pop, and it's like, oh, relief. And all of a sudden, I feel oh, fine. Goodness. I'm like, I thought I was dying. <laughs> yeah. I like that you talk about yeah. the. I mean, I love you know finding the thing that are movies, acting, you know, activities. Or like last summer, I started going um, camping with Faith. Oh, yes. yes, and that yes. was like to me was a very like conscious decision of like I'm gonna start to do this thing with her as yeah. an activity that we can both enjoy because she yeah. really loves the outdoors, she loves mm -hmm. camping, mm -hmm. um, and she's very particular about like where she sleeps, and it's her own sleeping bag, right? So yeah. she's like good to go. She thinks hotels are grimy, which yeah. I get because they are grimy. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it's this thing that we love to do. We love to hike. We love to see waterfalls and cool yeah. like nature bridges and like all that kind of thing. But it's like purposely trying to set something up so that when yes. she's 20, we can do this. When yeah. she's 25, when she's yes. 30. That's when smart. we're both really old. And I, I feel like I should have done something like that with Zach when he was younger. No, but I love the acting, though. No, no, no. But I love that one of the things you guys have in common as adults is this love of acting, this love yeah. of storytelling and creation. And so it's like just that. There's so many variations. But I will say... It, it it just really jogged in my brain when you mentioned about like the fair. Okay, so the fair is something we've yeah. done, except like just a, a very small number of years when just financially it simply was not possible. Year, right? Yeah, like yeah. One. Okay, so but I will say you're right. There were a couple of times in the last five years where Brienne and I looked at each other and went, "Are they even going to want to go this year?" And yeah. then a shift did happen because we went and we realized, oh wait. There are things that they like now about the fair that mm -hmm. they didn't like before. So it's like taking something yeah. that you did with your kids when they were children, but tweaking it enough that it now appeals to them as adults. Like, for instance, now, mm -hmm. there's no way Maxwell won't go to the fair. Even yeah. though we thought now that he doesn't really, he's not into rides so right. much. Oh, no, but the yeah. animals. He yeah. will spend hours now looking at I mean, he loves at the, the food. He's always oh, loves yes. the food. <laughs> But I mean, who doesn't? You know what I mean? And we found that if we get less, we don't get the fancy, expensive, unlimited ride bracelets. We instead take that money, give each of the kids some cash, and say, you could do some shopping. 
both of the kids or, love that. Or get tickets to play games. Or get tickets to play games. Because we never so did like, the games. Okay, yeah, yeah, like ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because it would just turn into like, mommy, continue to play the game, spend $80 so you can get the giant thing. Right, right. That's not You know, we're like, no, you can play the game. You can have fun with it. Right. So I think yeah. that there is like two approaches. There's the approach of find something that as adults you guys all like. Or there is the approach, take something that they've liked since children, but revise it. And I think that that has been such a winner for us in terms of, now, okay, in terms of uh, them still enjoying to spend time with us. Right. So my question then is, how is it different for you guys in terms of just parenting? Is it different the way you parent now that you have an a young adult or an adult child as opposed to when they were so much smaller do you feel you're more hands-on do you feel you're more hands-off do you try to approach them more like a friend instead of an authority figure what has changed in your guys' opinions yeah um well definitely more hands-off because when they're little you have to do so much to take care of them mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and so when they're adults <clears throat> they don't need that aspect um but you want to try to be there for them emotionally and just like, you know, especially let them know, you know, that you're there for them mm -hmm. and, and that, you know, you always love them and all that. Um, what was the other part of that? <laughs> I was going somewhere. No, but I like that. Like, it, it's, it is true though, isn't it? It's like as yeah. little ones, I don't think, I mean, every, every child, everyone, just everyone, let's leave it. Yeah. Everyone likes to hear, I love you. Right. I care about you. Baby, I, I just think you're awesome. I think what you're doing yeah. today is awesome. That's a beautiful picture. I love what you just said. That's so witty. That's so insightful. But I think as adults, they do kind of need a different kind of assurance. Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, yeah. I know, like when Max could first vote, he pours over everything. Like, and I'm opening my mouth to kind of say, like, buddy, you don't have to read, like, every little <laughs> time. But yeah. then I'm like, wait a minute. Maybe Who am he, I to say that? Right, maybe he does. I mean, that's what wants. material's there. That's he right. Wants to be yeah. he want, and he's like, this is the era of fake news. How do I know what's true? I'm going to go see. This man says mm -hmm. he's worked in hospital administration for 20 years. Where? What? Mm -hmm. Oh, worked with a hospital for 20 years. He's like, doing what? Yeah. Uh, was he a middle manager? Was he, you know, a director? Of it? What was, was he, he a doing? janitor? And you're Google, 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 Google. Yeah. I'm like, Damn, I'm going to be talking to Matt. Matt, who yeah. would you vote for? <laughs> <laughs> Number three. I mean, you yeah. know, you're like, he's got the information down. And so it's, it, but it really was. I was like, oh, look at me, you know, grown up mama. I'm going to give my son some insight. Oh, baby, you know, nobody reads the terms of service agreement. And, you know, Max is like sitting there going, huh, did you know that they own every picture we upload? And I'm like, you know, things like that. Right. But it is true. I mean, I think that <laughs> as as parents as of adults, they do still want to hear, I love you, I'm proud of you. Actually, oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah, I know I do. Yes, absolutely. And oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do like what you oh, said, yeah, and I'm putting that on my parents. Yeah. Right. You know, I can't even count how many times as an adult I have taken something to my parents and said, look. Right. And, oh. Yeah. That's brutal. That kills you. Yeah. That's you want brutal. that. Yeah. You want that reassurance and validation from your parents. Yeah. Or anyone yeah. like if your parents don't. That's why it's like it's been really nice with Facebook. Like I said with my dad, I've noticed that lately he's been like she shares all my posts, all my posts about all the film stuff. And Aww. you know initially he wasn't as like you know necessarily like you know I, because I I think maybe he feels like I've. I've changed my mind on, I don't know what I wanted to do with my life. Not really. I always wanted to do this. I was just never, you know, I never felt able to pursue it for all those yes. years. So it's, it took him a while to get on board with realizing, okay, she really means business. And she's yeah. like, and so now he shares all of it. It makes me feel like he's proud of me, you know? Yeah. yeah. So and there's that, something that, that really does, doesn't change. 
doesn't. That does not change. Yeah. No, yeah. we want that validation from our parents. Yeah, yeah. We want them to be proud of us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, oh, it's so. It's like so interesting. Like a lot of connections that I don't yeah. have ever yeah. had before. And so you know, you look at those things, mm-hmm. and then you're like, okay. How can I, you know, relate that to my child now? Yeah. Let them know. Yeah. So I, I tell Zach, you know, I'm proud of you. I'm, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I posted on my my thing, you know, I'm proud to be his mom. I yeah. Like, you know, yes. Like, yeah. Because that's important to hear. Mm-hmm. And like to, to praise to praise our children as individuals, independent mm-hmm. from us, not like yes. that's my kid, that's my right. You know, like. We don't own them. Oh my right, gosh. Right. See, I know that yeah. even that is a statement that some parents do not agree with. Uh, so I'm trying yeah. to be careful and respect other people's right, opinions right, here. Right. But in my opinion, I don't feel that Maxwell's accomplishments are my exactly. accomplishments because I wombed him. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> right. like, because your cells made his cells. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, no, yeah. no, because we all I know. have a son who's a blah blah blah. I, 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 right. My, yeah. my being proud of him is not because like, oh, I am a doctor and a lawyer. But it's like, yes. I, it's because I love him and care about him so much, you know, he's the exactly. most important thing to me exactly. in the world. Exactly. And so it's like I, you know, I'm happy for his yes. achievements and yes. successes and, yeah. and and all of that, you know. I want to be able to turn to Maxwell and Faith and say, I am proud to know you as a person. Yeah. And I am not one of those moms who's like, I'm my kid's best friend. And it, no, I am their mom. Thank you very much. Um, I, I had just remembered uh, you uh, were asking about, you know, as as an adult uh, versus as, you know, raising them as a child. How do you approach it more as like trying to be, you know, a friend? Mm-hmm. And I think it's kind of like a mixture. Mm-hmm. It's like... You try to, you, you do kind of come from that angle a little bit more when they're older, I think. At mm-hmm. least I do. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but I still, the, the mothering side is still there, I think, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. too. It's still, you know, very clear that there's the... Yeah, I feel like those are almost two separate relationships. I feel like you are their mom. Mm-hmm. Right. And you can be their friend. Right. Mm-hmm. But those are like... You can be their mom and not be their friend, yeah. even as an adult. It just, you know, if your guys' personalities don't clash, right? Mm-hmm. You may not want to hang out. You may not want to be friends, but you still yeah. there's still you know that mother daughter mother son relationship. Yeah. So that's still gonna be there, but you may not be friends. Yeah. I mean that that's kind of how I see it. Is that it really can't and not that either way is right. You know. No. Some people that's just aren't right. friends with other people and. Yeah, I think that is going to be an incredibly personal. I mean, and I love even you know, like you said, knowing that this is what I do. You know, I yeah. I, I think that um, uh, like when I hear parents uh, like just I mean like strangers like in public you know turn to their adult child and say you know I still beat your ass and I'm just kind of like you just completely undermine them as an adult. Now again, I get it. Mm-hmm. I get it. And I know that a lot of that is part of the repartee between a parent and an adult child and just a child. You know, like, the, oh, yeah. you know, the whole joke, I brought you into this world, I can take you out. Right. You know, like, yeah. I get that. But for me, on the receiving end of being mm-hmm. treated like I am less than, like I am a child and cannot yeah. make my own decisions and need someone to guide me, right? <laughs> it is incredibly demeaning. Mm-hmm. And it makes me not reach out right. again. Right. It yeah. makes you not want to have that contact. Yeah. Definitely. And then when we find ourselves in an adult situation, which it doesn't matter if you're in your 20s, in your 30s, in your 40s, in your 50s, in whatever, where you're like, oh, geez, we had an unexpected medical bill. This just happened to Rhea. Yeah. We have an unexpected medical bill. Oh, my gosh. Can we make the mortgage? And you're thinking to yourself, this is a very short-term loan type thing. We are self-employed. We can't really go to like a money tree. We choose not to own any credit cards whatsoever. Is this something where we could turn to a parent and say, we're short $400. We can give you back $400 in 12 days when our paycheck arrives. But it's a, you know, it's a based on commission sales from vendors, so it's not like something I can go and take to a money tree and get that way. And my answer is primarily no. I don't feel comfortable doing that because of the strings. I'm a 45, almost 46-year-old woman 
I don't want to be treated like a child for several months after because I had to ask for a loan. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't want Max or Faith to ever feel that way. No, yeah, I know, I get that. Um, yeah, I've helped uh, Zach out in the past, but not like, it wasn't a loan basis. It was just like, you know, yeah, I can help you with this right now. I'm helping you with this. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents have like, done that too. That's right. Just think yeah. of it as like, you know, birthday present, Christmas present. Exactly. You know? yeah. And then I still get a birthday, Christmas present. Oh, oh yeah. Course. But no. to me, it's like, so I guess from that angle, I'm like, I guess that's a little bit more than a friend. Because normally, a lot of us are not in a position to just show up at a friend's house and go, I could tell from your posts and the, the way we were talking that you guys don't have a lot of groceries right now, so I brought groceries. Yes, some of us do that with friends, absolutely. But I think with an adult child, I mean, that's a given for me. I will absolutely do that. Right. Yeah. But I mean, without any hesitation. If Zach, if Zach and you're right. Help. I'm not going to make it. Alone. Yeah. If Zach needed help, then I yeah. would help. And sometimes, like, sometimes he has like needed like to borrow money for a very short term, right? Um, like a small amount, mm -hmm. and I'm like, and I'm like super broke, and I'm like, I definitely need to get it paid back. And he knows, and in those situations, yeah, like, right. He does pay it back. Yeah. But then, well, and there's sometimes that we just can't do it. Right. There's times. Right. When you know. Know. <laughs> and then there's yeah. times when he'll ask me that, and that's a small amount. I'll just feel like. Yeah, just yeah. Keep it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll send up a little extra, get yourself, you know, you know, something. Oh, right. You know, yeah. Because these are, you know, these are the things that we can do, you know. <laughs> this is what I can do. This exactly. is what I can do yeah. for Zach that exactly. is, mm -hmm. you know, going to be the best thing to help Zach. And mm -hmm. the best way I can show him, you know, my love without mm -hmm. being able to see him all the time. Right. And I know yeah. money shouldn't, but whatever. But yeah, but money no, is a big but, thing. You need money to get through life. And yeah, then, you know yeah. your kid is struggling, you know. And the person who tells you that's not the case is someone who has it in excess. They have so, yes, yeah. they have it in excess. Yeah, um, yes. I think that it's it's a wonderful it's a wonderful idea to say you're 18, you're out, you're on your own, go learn the hard way. It's never right. like that. I did type right, and I'm just like, yeah. did you? Did you really? Really? <laughs> and I never understood that because I'm like, do you really want your kids to struggle? You're like, I don't want that. I want oh. anything that I didn't like as a kid or a teen yep. parenting wise, which yes. again, there's no wrong or right way to do it. But the stuff that I really, really didn't like, mm -hmm. I have tried adamantly to not do to Max and Sure. Kids. Absolutely. You know? What did we just say in a, in a, it was another conversation we were having with one of the moms, and we said, uh, I think it was Carrie, and she said, I just want to be as good of a mom as my mom was. And I said, that is awesome. I said, I want the betterment of the human race. I just want Max and Faith to be one step of a better mom than I was. Mm -hmm. Just one step or better. Or dad, right? <laughs> I don't want Max to get right. Well, I mean, whatever. But, um, you know, one step of a better parent. Just like that one little evolutionary step. Because then I figure, well, golly, in 10 generations' time, we're going to have the most awesome parents on the planet, right? Like, sure. just a little, oh, bit yeah. better, a little bit I'm not perfect. As a matter of fact, it was very liberating. And this happened literally this calendar year in 2019 that I said to Faith, and I just stopped what I was doing. I was, we happened to be cooking. She was sitting talking with me. I stopped what I was cooking. I put my spoon down. I turned to her and I said, I need you to know, I know I'm not the perfect mom. I know that you think that I love Max more because I have to see to him more. And I know that I have made mistakes and there are moments that I was not the best mom to you that I know you feel I could have been. But I need you to know I have never thought of you as less than and I have tried my best and it wasn't always enough, but I love you. I love you and I'm proud of you like you would not believe. And she was like, no one's perfect, Jenny. <laughs> she's, just like, she's just so freaking classy. No, one, you know, no, no one's perfect, Jen. It's okay. <laughs> like, what is that? Like, see, I never had to deal with, sorry. No, no, yeah. I never had to deal with that aspect because, you know, of a one kid feeling like, you know, because yes. I only have one child. Yes. So that's like a totally different thing that I never had to experience. Whereas being a, a child with uh, many siblings, 
you know, I experienced it as a child, feeling like, you know, sometimes there were fav- there was maybe some favoritism or whatever. Yeah. And I knew that if I had more than one kid, I would never want to to make my kids feel that way mm-hmm. but never had to experience that one yeah but I do with Zach you know obviously as far as not being perfect as you know none of us are and mm-hmm. certainly don't feel as parents like, you know I always you look back and it's like you look at things that maybe I could have done better I was really young when I had Zach you know, hell, I was just learning to be an adult. I was only 16 when I had him. I wasn't even an adult. Yeah. I was still a kid myself. Yeah. And so, you know, that makes it that's a lot different than having a kid when you're already an adult and mm-hmm. kind of established as an adult in mm-hmm. life. Um, and so certainly I was not perfect. You know, I like to think that I did as good as I could have with <clears throat> being such a young mom. And yeah. I mean doing everything I could Mm -hmm. to provide for him and be there. Mm -hmm. Um, I think emotionally, when I was young, I was not as ready to, like I didn't really know how to be, uh, to bond properly with him. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I had been older, I feel like when he was very young, I would have bonded more with him. Not that we didn't bond, but I feel like I'm, Maybe I would have appreciated a lot of the moments, like, mm-hmm. you know, when they're little mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, look, they're taking their first steps. And yeah. and I was such a kid myself still in my mind in some ways that I didn't, you know, I don't think I, this is, that probably sounds really bad. No, I was excited about them, but I don't feel, I feel like when I look at my other friends, I have that, that maybe they expressed it more. Maybe I just didn't express it as much. I don't know. Because mm-hmm. I am, yeah. you know, I as much as I'm like a people person when it comes to like my private feelings, mm-hmm. I'm usually, I can be a little more close to, yeah, yeah close to the vest or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's why yeah, I have anxiety about talking about the camera. <laughs> my fine. feeling is always that if you are worried about being a good parent, you're a good parent. Because if you don't worry about it, you're like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> You're probably not too bad at a job. Oh, we see that. Um, yeah. We, we see All that time. just in, out yeah. in the world. Sure. I mean, the attitude definitely is the, I'm the best parent because I'm the parent you've got. And I'm kind of like, yeah. holy moly. Oh, my gracious. I don't know what this stranger's day has been like. Mm-hmm. I am not trying to pass judgment on her. You know, she's there at the grocery store alone she's got three kiddos you know under five but i'm like i can't i mean like i'm holding my breath to not say anything because again everyone parents differently everyone is living their own life everyone is doing the best that they can and you don't want to be and i don't want to judge people people. but at the same time i'm thinking to myself those are words that would never leave my mouth to my children right 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 but you know what my kids call me by my first name I have had actors that we work with be mortified by that. Almost like personally offended. Oh no. And I'm like, how are you? you?" (laughs) So I do try to remind myself that when I, you know, I feel myself being very judgy. Sure. But I think that there are amazing 16 year old moms and there are amazing. 46 year old new moms and there are horrible 16 year old moms and horrible 46 year old I oh, honestly yeah. think that it's not about age it really is old <laughs> noodle I really feel like every year that our kids grow mm-hmm. up is another year that we've been a parent yeah so like I better be a better damn parent than I was the first year I was taking care mm-hmm. of them Right. You know, because you have more experience. Every year you have another year of experience under your belt. Yeah. You know, I feel like I am learning things with those kids every single day about how to better talk to them. Yeah. How to better actually communicate with them. Mm -hmm. And to kind of circle back on your question of do you feel like as they're getting older, parenting has changed. I feel like it changes every year. Sometimes it changes every month or week. It's like the commercial mm, because you know you start where they're so small yes and they need everything yeah. every single mo- you know like okay now brush your teeth okay now get dressed okay now you're gonna do school okay now we're gonna have lunch okay now you can have free time okay this is the stuff we're doing together for free time yeah <laughs> okay now it's time to go to bed now it's the whole going to bed process and as they get older they start taking over you know they start knowing they have to brush their teeth every right day. They, are, they start knowing that okay it's bedtime they go to bed yeah or 
as we're at now, now they set their own bedtime, yeah. right? Yeah. So I feel like there is, like, they definitely do get that autonomy. Mm -hmm. So the, the older they get, it's like your parenting has to change because sure. the level of their autonomy is changing. Yes, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I, I think it reminds me of the commercial that is frequent right yeah. now on some of the internet channels. Uh, I believe it is a commercial about taking vacations in Idaho. Yeah, it's like there's 18 seasons eight, or something. You only have 18 summers. And I'm like, and the yeah. like, what happens after the 18 summers? <laughs> like, first time Faith and I, Max is 19, right? What is he? That's, That's it? Forget it. Oh my god. <laughs> the first time I ever saw him. him home? Yeah. <laughs> You're no longer a parent. <laughs> We're going on vacation with your sister. Sorry, honey, you had 18 summers. Yeah. <laughs> um, the first time I saw it, I was with and we both like simultaneously turn to be <laughs> at the end and go, what the? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I mean, we understand the, the you know why they're doing it, the angle they're trying to take, but we're like, no, you don't. No, you <laughs> don't. They still need you. They just need you in different ways. And as parents, yeah. just like there's no handbook, there's no manual for raising kids. There's no handbook for raising adults. Having adult no. children in our lives, we have to figure it out. It's part of our job when we say, I'm carrying this baby to term. That's when we make the decision. Or in Brianne's case, which perhaps was a more difficult decision, I'm going to marry this woman with two children. It's not I feel like, like it's as conscious a decision as someone deciding to have a child. Oh, I absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You just, I think you bit off a lot because it was kind of like, <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a five and an eight year old and yeah. there are already people. Yeah. That's right. Good <laughs> Lord. <laughs> well, you guys, I think I think we have talked this topic not to death. To life. Well, I could talk more. We could. <laughs> but I think that that is the best message that we want to leave everyone mm -hmm. today with. And that is just if you are still actively parenting, mm -hmm. then you are doing it right. Mm -hmm. And so and it's okay about, to question if you're doing stuff right. I think that's that, also a that sign. That does really mean that you yeah. are yeah. doing it right. Yes. Yeah. You care. I question it. And away. you're yeah. questioning question yourself, it. which means you're going to be always thinking about ways that you can do it better. That's right. And then it's okay. We're not going to shame our adult children. You know, they will reach out when they need to reach out, and we will mm -hmm. be what they need us to be. And as adults... Who are also moms that's right we are both moms and adult children yeah yeah and honestly the biggest thing i can say is if you want the communication to happen no matter if it's going up or going down mm -hmm. to a parent or a child just keep pushing it 